Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at an interesting creature combo deck centered around cards with converted mana cost X and we're playing the full 12 creatures with converted mana cost X, 4 Chamber Sentry, 4 Stone Cold Serpent and 4 Ugin's Conjurant. Now the text box of these creatures doesn't matter all that much because more often than not we're going to play these cards for X equals 0 so they immediately enter the battlefield and die. And why would we do such a thing? Well, we've got a bunch of cards in the deck that care about creatures entering the battlefield and creatures dying. So let's go over the entire deck here. How does our deck eventually win the game? Well, we've got six creatures that help us do that. Two copies of Corpse Knight that says whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control, each opponent loses one life. And then we also have the full four copies of Cruel Celebrant, which is our preferred win condition. And Cruel Celebrant says, whenever a Cruel Celebrant or another creature or Planeswalker we control dies, each opponent loses one life and we also gain one life. So if we combine these two win conditions with our creatures with converted mana costs X, we could play these for X equals zero. They enter the battlefield to trigger Corpse Knight and they also die right away to potentially trigger a Cruel Celebrant and drain the opponent for one. So if we cast enough of these creatures with converted mana cost X for X equals zero, then we can win the game. But of course it's not sustainable to win the game that way unless we can draw a ton of cards. And that's basically where the rest of the deck comes in. We've got the full four copies of Midnight Reaper saying whenever a non-token creature we control dies, Midnight Reaper deals one damage to us and we draw a card. So that's a great card draw engine to combine with our creatures with converted mana cost X. Then we also have the full four copies of Beast Whisper saying whenever we cast a creature spell draw a card, which also works with all of our X's. And then we have three copies of Moldervine Reclamation saying whenever a creature we control dies, we gain one life and draw a card. So it's similar to Midnight Reaper, but instead of losing one life, we gain one life. So it's also great in combination with Midnight Reaper, as it helps us offset all the life we lose to the Midnight Reaper triggers. And of course, that's also why Cruel Celebrant is so much better than the Corpse Knight in this deck, because it also gains one life and helps us offset Midnight Reaper so we don't die when drawing too many cards. And then the remaining cards in the deck, four copies of Paradise Root, just to help us ramp out these Beast Whispers and Moldervine Reclamations. It also sometimes comes up if you have two Paradise Druids in play. You could potentially make all five colors of mana to return Chamber Sentry from the graveyard to your hand, but that doesn't come up too often. And then we also have two copies of Forever Young, which is kind of the final piece of the puzzle, because sometimes you have so many draw effects in play that you end up drawing your entire deck before actually killing the opponent. So sometimes you need to cast Forever Young, which can return all these creatures with Convert Mana Cost X from our graveyard back on top of our deck. And of course, as long as we have a card draw engine in play, if we play one of our creatures with Convert Mana Cost X, we'll draw the next one and we can basically replay all those creatures once again, triggering our Cruel Celebrants and Corpse Knights to win the game. But we usually don't need more than one Forever Young to secure the win, and it doesn't really help us set up since it's not one of our card draw engines or win conditions, so we don't want to draw too many in the early game. But it is a nice way to make sure we can actually win the game if we've got a ton of card draw engines in play, and we're slowly running out of cards in our library, so we can still put all these creatures back and uh, drain the opponent once again with each one of them. And then taking a look at the mana base, there's a lot of ways to potentially construct a mana base. I've tried a bunch of different variations with more or less uh, temples to scry and uh, ended up here with uh, four copies of Fabled Passage to help us fix our mana. We've got four Temple of Melody, then the full 12 Shocklands, and then a couple basics to search up with Fabled Passage, three forests, one swamp, one plains. Wish I had room for more basics to search up with Fabled Passage so we don't risk uh, not having any basics to search up but uh, still need a right balance of enough uh, colored mana because casting Beast Whisper, which is double green, as well as casting cards like Cruel Celebrant, which is black and white, is pretty demanding. So it's not easy to construct a perfect mana base for this deck. And if we introduce too many dual lands like the other temples, then uh, we end up shocking ourselves a ton with all the shock lands as well. And that's pretty painful. So the current mana base strikes a good balance between having the right colors without being too painful, as we can potentially afford to play a couple of these shock lands tapped as well. So yeah, that's the deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a bit of a slow hand, but it does have some of the key pieces. Double Celebrant Reclamation. So don't love it, but I'll try. 
this could benefit from a Paradise Root. Midnight Reaper, not bad. Uh, let's see what we're up against. Turn to Ventress Gargoyle. Alright. Opponent stuck on two. Let's play the Reaper. And I think I'll wait before uh, deploying all these axes. So our opponent does seem like a pretty dedicated mill deck. Now we gotta watch out for all sorts of three mana counters. Would I rather get Paradise Root countered or Cruel Celebrant is a question. And I'm not sure what the answer is. Paradise Root makes it more likely for me to play Reclamation next turn. Celebrant speeds up my clock. Let's try this. Yep. Milled over Forever Young, so only have one left in the deck. And of course Forever Young pretty good against the mill deck. Gargoyle can still block, so no attacks. And yeah, I'll wait on the axis until I can hopefully resolve Reclamation. So currently six cards in graveyards. Gargoyle can't attack you yet. Unless they can mill me here. Sanctuary gets back Thought Collapse. So if this gets countered, at least I can attack. Yep. So, not sure if I'm supposed to play anything here. I think I can wait. Opponent deciding whether or not they want to mill over the Thought Collapse, they decide to just draw it. Can just start casting these as uh, large creatures. And again, if they counter, then I get to attack. So I think I'll play one of these for X equals 5. Um, only one Paradise Root in place, I can't get back Chamber Sentry from the Graveyard quite yet. Probably just play Conjurant for X equals 5. That way Paradise Root can still attack. But still might force the counter spell here. And if it resolves, so be it. Suppose I could have also considered X equals 6. That way if it did resolve it can at least attack past Gargoyle, but even then I'm still okay with the trade. So I think we just pass here. Might see an into the story end of turn, which would be pretty bad for me too. Yep, that makes more sense now I didn't counter. Alright, so they're blue-black. So probably for uh, Drown in the Lock. Another Paradise Druid, so that could allow me to get back Chamber Sentry from the Graveyard. So probably just attacking with Conjurants. Gets Drowned. And then I can play Chamber Sentry for X equals 4 here. As long as I tap manually. Because I don't want to get the Midnight Reaper countered. So that eats a counter spell, but now I can get back Chamber Sentry with double Paradise Druids. Sanctuary, get back another counterspell. And drown in the lock a bit more flexible. Into the story to draw it. And they're gonna kill Paradise Roots, so I can't get back Chamber Sentry, fair enough. But they are tapped out. Ooh, Forever Young. So we should be able to figure out a way to win here. One, two, three. 
only three axes in the graveyard. It's not that many. But uh, maybe we can find a couple more. So I can play Midnight Reaper. And hopefully find some more axes. So I'm losing one life for each axe I play at this point, but we've got a lot of life to work with. Yeah, that's a brick. Yeah, there's another Celebrant in the graveyard too. So let's cast Forever Young. And then definitely want all the axes. I'm drawing two per axe I play, so I can also put some creatures back just to have more cards in library in case of decking. How about I do something like this? And a Paradise Root. Not sure here. I would need more time to figure this out. So I definitely want to draw an X first. Then Celebrant is fine. Then we'll, I guess, put all the Xs first and then we'll figure it out. Something like this. So we draw a Celebrant and another X. I can play Celebrant. And then keep playing our Xs, draining the opponent twice per. And I still have an attack step as well. So I don't think we have a guaranteed lethal here. But we're close. Should I wait on this last chamber sentry? Yeah, I know I'm not going to be drawing into any more axes. That's kind of the risk I took by putting all these other creatures on top as well instead of giving myself the chance of drawing into more axes. Yeah, I can put them to six, attack, they block, they take one plus another two, so they're not quite dead. Yeah, I think I wait. And then uh, next turn I could play another Midnight Reaper here. And maybe keep going. Another Gargoyle, sure. Yeah, I'm not sure if I was supposed to put creatures other than the Celebrant and the Xs on top. Definitely didn't maximize my chances of winning last turn, but maybe I give myself a better chance of winning this turn. They can easily have two counter spells here. If they counter this, then I guess I'm kind of stuck. Because I wouldn't get to draw anything. Because uh, unlike Beast Whisper, which is on cast, this has to actually die. So they might counter the Chamber Sentry here. But then I can maybe resolve Paradise Druid, which can get back Chamber Sentry. Alright, to let it resolve. So now we've got plenty more ammunition. I can play another Midnight Reaper. I still have the mana to potentially play another Paradise Druid or attack with the one in play. I have 25 cards remaining, so not afraid of decking. Maybe it'll counter this X card. All right. Let's try again. They tapped their black mana, so they can have a drown in the lock here to counter. All right. That should just about do it here.
So yeah, if they counter the first X spell, then maybe I wouldn't have been able to go off. And yeah, drain my opponent down to one, probably draw into another X card, and otherwise I can also just attack. And the Cruel Celebrants would drain them out. Sweet, so managed to beat Blue Black Mill, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and this hand is not exactly what we're looking for. Bunch of creatures with Convert Manacles X, but no card draw engines. So I think we'll mulligan. Alright, this is a bit more balanced. We'll keep, and then I think I'm bottoming the Corpse Knights. Use the Temples to Scry. Fabled Passage is a little awkward because I want to go turn to Paradise Root, turn 3 Beast Whisper. So I'll need to draw another untapped land, and this doesn't come into play untapped turn 3. So I think I'm bottoming it. Up against Sacred Foundry. So if I don't draw an untapped land, I can just play a Midnight Reaper first. Up against Jeskai, so this could be a Jeskai Fires of Invention deck. Which uh, does run Deafening Clarion to wipe the board, so that's not something I'm looking forward to. Another Paradise Druid can go. Alright, it's gonna be a Bone Crusher Giant killing Paradise Druid instead. Fair enough. And I'm gonna hold on to the Conjurant for now, since I can potentially land a Beast Whisper before drawing two. And yep, there's a Deafening Clarion. Alright, so we're not doing great here. Fabled Passage can make white mana for Celebrants. But we might have to be a bit greedier here. And look for more card draw engines. Yeah, in this matchup... It's not about the Cruel Celebrant as much as it is about finding Moldervine Reclamation, Midnight Reapers, etc. So here I can play Beast Whisper and pass, I can play Beast Whisper and then play one of the X creatures. Ideally I can play Whisper and Reaper before playing these. So it's a tricky spot. I think I'm gonna wait, and hopefully the Beast Whisper survives. Doesn't die to another Bone Crusher Giant at least. And a Deafening Clarion would kill both creatures. It's gonna be a Cavalier of Gales. So it definitely looks like the Fires of Invention deck with the Cavaliers. Alright, well, we're under quite a bit of pressure here. We'll just play Midnight Reaper. And there's a Reclamation. I do have the option of playing Stone Cold Serpent for X equals 1 to just Chum Block Cavalier. Or I can play Paradise Druid now. Which seems better. And then next turn, there's a small chance we can go off. And there's the Fires of Invention. And Teferi. This isn't a fight you can win. It's gonna bounce a Beast Whisper. Like Thanks with both. Think I'll take it. Alright, so. I can play Reclamation plus Celebrants, but then I need to get pretty lucky to win the game, because I'll need to draw lots of creatures with Convert Mana cost X. I suppose I could also go with Beast Whisper, because I have the Celebrant to offset the life loss from Midnight Reaper, but I guess saving myself one mana lets me just attack with Paradise Root instead of needing to tap Paradise Root for mana, so I guess that's worth it here. So I can take two from Temple Garden, Play Beast Whisper. 
Then play Celebrants. And then we gotta make sure to stack the Celebrant trigger to resolve before the Midnight Reaper trigger. Alright, get another redraw here. Alright, let's keep it going. And we can attack for 5 damage. So we don't need to draw all the creatures with Convert Manacles X here, but I'll take it. Now sadly we're one mana short of casting Forever Young. And so we kind of fizzle out here. Yeah, one more mana and we can cast Forever Young and get back all of these, which might have been enough. Can hit for five, but we're dead to the Cavalier on the way back. Suppose I could have tried to just play Stone Coil for X equals one to block Cavalier. But I'm assuming that if my opponent untaps with Fires of Invention and four cards in hand, they can find a way to win through one blocker, so... There's a few ways we could have played this game. And we weren't too far off. Just needed one extra on tap stab. And there we see Kenrith, which can also gain the opponent 10 life. With the uh, white ability. Or can give everyone haste, including the second Cavalier. And that should be game over, so... Yeah, playing a Stone Cold Serpent for X equals 1 would not have helped us. Because the Cavalier also gains Trample, for what it's worth. Alright, GG's. So, close, but no cigar. Maybe if the fairy doesn't bounce our uh, Beast Whisper and we draw three cards for each creature instead of just two, we uh, manage to draw far enough into our deck. But uh, yeah, still not bad considering we got uh, Deafening Clarion at the start of the game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play and we've got a reasonable hand. Turn three Beast Whisper and then we can uh, hopefully start drawing some cards. Missing black mana in our mana base, but the Paradise Root, of course, fixes that as well. So we're hoping to find more creatures with Convert Mana Cost X, more card draw engines, another Beast Whisper, Midnight Reaper, facing the Rakdo Sacrifice deck with Witch's Oven, play Paradise Root. And the sequencing in this deck can be tricky. Sometimes you want to, like, play your Beast Whisper and your Conjurant right away to draw a card, sometimes you can afford to wait. Especially if you've got another card draw engine coming up, like this Moldervine Reclamation. So your opponent's on Junt Sacrifice instead. So a card we definitely need to watch out for is Massacre Girl, but uh, difficult to really play around with this deck, we're kind of all in. So I think I'm just jamming Beast Whisper here, hoping the Paradise Root survives and then next turn I can play Reclamation. And since we just drew the Reclamation, I think I'm going to wait on the Conjurant to potentially draw an extra card next turn. Trail of Crumbs, alright, our opponent's setting up with all their card draw engines. Let's see if we can outdraw them. So we'll start here. So now we're just looking for more card draw engines and eventually one of our win conditions. So the Cruel Celebrant or Corpse Knights. And there's a Celebrant. Alright, so double Celebrant, but we're out of creatures with Convert Mana Cost X. Of course, Forever Young can potentially get them back. Alright, still nothing from our opponents. Another Beast Whisper. So it seems somewhat likely their opponent's gonna play a Massacre Girl next turn, given that they haven't done anything so far. Because with the Witch's Ovens, my opponent can sacrifice Massacre Girl to kill my uh, Beast Whisper, even if at the moment only Paradise Root would die to the Massacre Girl. So at the end of the day, I think I'm gonna go with uh, Cruel Celebrants. Draw cards, cast Forever Young. I guess we can Stone Coil first. Alright, 
I can fetch a swamp. For every young, get these three back. And keep going. And this way we keep a Celebrant and a Beast Whisper in hand to rebuild after our board is wiped. Alright, well, opponent concedes. We weren't guaranteed to win this turn, but I guess if we got lucky and drew a bunch more creatures with Converted Mana Cost X, we could have gotten there. So yeah, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, we've got a reasonable hand. We've got only one card draw engine, so we're going to be looking for at least another one before we can truly go off. And then I need to wait to maybe offset the life loss from the Midnight Reaper, whether that's a Moldervine Reclamation or Cruel Celebrant. Up against turn one Healer's Hawk. Alright, Paradise Druid's a good pickup. Always have the option, of course, of just playing the Stone Coil as an actual creature to block these. Uh, flying creatures from my opponents. Although now that we drew Beast Whisperer, I kind of want to keep them. I still need a way to offset the life loss and I might take a pretty big hit. Especially if my opponent has a, a Rally of Wings. But uh, this potentially has the highest upside. Ooh, Emperor Eagle, that's a good one too. So, there's a Cruel Celebrant. Well, technically if my opponent doesn't have any more Anthem effects and I play Stone Cold Serpent to block the Loyal Pegasus, I would only take 6. So maybe that's the play. In which case... I can probably afford to play Midnight Reaper, because I would take 1 extra damage from the Stone Coil dying, which is still not lethal. And then play Stone Cold for X equals 1 to block. That way I get to draw the most cards, and then next turn I get to play Celebrant and keep going. Sounds reasonable to me. I guess I should attack first with the Beast Whisper on the off chance that they take it here. Right, I did draw a land with the Beast Whisper, does that change anything? I think I'm just playing this for one. Ogin's Conjurant, don't want to play that yet until we get the Celebrant in play. Alright, so hopefully no more Imperial Eagles or Rally of Wings, but it looks like they have the Rally of Wings. Alright, so I get to block but still take 12. So we were pretty likely to set up the kill next turn with two card draw engines, Celebrant and then Forever Young to recycle these creatures, but put in just a little bit too fast here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with uh, reasonable hands. Paradise Druid definitely improves this hand quite a bit, helping us ramp out Beast Whisper and Reclamation. Yeah, I think I'm okay with another X card. I do need land for at some point, so it could be greedy to keep this on top. Nah. A little bit of greed is probably fine here. Turn 2 Leafkin, so our opponent's ramping nicely, could see a turn 3 Nissa, which would be quite good. Uh, 
And then next turn I have the option of going Beast Whisper, play my Axis if I'm afraid of like a Wicked Wolf killing my Beast Whisper. Or I could wait and maybe try and get Reclamation in play first. Tamio. And what are we looking for? A Risen Reef, alright. So blue-green elementals. Celebrant's not bad. Yeah, I think I'm waiting. And then ideally I draw lands and then I can go Reclamation into my axes. Otherwise I can go Celebrant and we'll uh, take it from there. And there's a Risen Reef. And what can they get back? A Paradise Roots. Alright, so opponent's got a lot of mana here for next turn. So they could cast a scary X spell. We found a Conjurant. I guess what I can do is play one X spell first, maybe I draw the land and I can play Reclamation before playing the rest. If that makes sense. Corpse Knights. Hmm, how much more do I want to wait? Well, the forest doesn't let me play Celebrant and Corpse Knight here, so maybe I fire off another one. Alright, that just replaced itself. But it does make my Forever Young better, and there's a land, alright. So I could wait... Um, to get a bit more damage out of my Celebrant. But just in case something happens to my Beast Whisper, I think I just want to draw my cards. Let's keep going. And then next turn I can deploy both uh, Corpse Knight and Celebrant to maybe start draining. So what's the big finish? Hopefully no mass manipulation. Seek and find. Agent of Treachery. So they are running Agent. That's uh, bad news. Do they have one in hand? Could be a Voracious Hydra killing my Beast Whisper. Alright, just a Krasis. That's acceptable. One goes up to 22, but we get to do whatever we want next turn, which is all I can ask for, and a Midnight Reaper as well. So I do have enough mana to play Corpse Knight, Cruel Celebrant, and then Forever Young, but of course the Reaper does draw me the most cards. 41 cards in Library, there's 5 axes in the Graveyard, so I'm not sure what leads to the highest win percentage here. Definitely want to play the Cruel Celebrant, so maybe I'll start there. Find Stone Coil. Yeah, I somehow doubt that I'm going to run out of cards here, so I think I'm okay not playing the Reaper. And instead just speeding up my clock. So I'll fetch a Plains. Play Corpse Knights. And we should be able to get there. Cast all my X's, then cast Forever Young. And draining the opponent for two with each creature we play. And the order doesn't matter here. And then I just need to find a couple more axes along the way. Which shouldn't be a problem. So 
So now we've drawn all the ones we knew about. We're also gaining a ton of life, so if we still don't get there this turn, we should have a nice uh, life total to maybe go for it next turn. Alright, still nothing. I guess I'll play the sentry before the serpents, and then maybe I'll hold on to the serpents. Alright, well, we didn't draw any additional axes in the meantime. 26 cards remaining. Still a pretty big chunk of axes left. So I could wait and then play a couple more celebrants and kill them next turn. Or I could try and go for it now. I think it's probably worth it still. Beast Whisper draws cards regardless of creatures dying. So I might just kill them next turn anyway. Alright, we didn't get there, sadly. Bones at 2. But we're at 38, so we should be pretty safe. And I'll discard a bunch of lands. And then I guess uh, Paradise Druids, Celebrant, sure. Alright. So Bones at 2. Got a pretty stacked hand. Can just kill them by playing creatures with Corpse Knight in play. Although, yeah, mass manipulation, that's uh, one way to potentially do it. Although I have another Corpse Knight in hand. X equals 3. Hits for 9. But I should still have to kill here pretty easily. Alright, sweet. So we got her against uh, Simic Ramp. So yeah, the deck is not the epitome of consistency, definitely falls under the jank category, but it's pretty fun when it goes off and it's uh, kind of something different. So yeah, pretty fun deck uh, if you get the cards for it, but I wouldn't recommend crafting it if you don't own the cards already. So that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.